Good morning, my friends, and uh, welcome back uh, to our Bible study. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Today we're going back into the book of Jeremiah. Uh, today we're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 26 and also uh, chapter 7 through 9. Now, Jeremiah did not write in a chronological order, so we're going to be jumping back and forth through the book uh, from time to time. And so um, today I want to begin reading with chapter 26, verse number 1. And I'm going to be just uh, reading some important scriptures uh, through, uh, just to kind of give you the setting of some of the things that are taking place. In 26, 1, it says, In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Now, Jehoiakim, remember, he's the brother of Jehoahaz, who only uh, reigned for three months, and then he was taken to Egypt and died in Egypt. But... Um, we uh, read this, and then I want to go to verse number 7. Uh, the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking the words in the house of the Lord. Of course, he is uh, condemning them for their rebelliousness. But the priests and the prophets, and um, when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, "'You shall die.'" They were offended at his word, and they're, going to, they're now wanting to put him to death. Verse number 11, Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all of the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will, re will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. Now, we see that, uh, again, a lot of the opposition initiated with the priests and the prophets. I want to just remind you over the New Testament, some of Jesus' greatest opposition came from the religious leaders. And it's so unfortunate the people that should be supporting and saying amen to your word are the ones that are against you oftentimes. And this was uh, Jeremiah's case. In the same chapter, now this is interesting to me, there's another prophet, a prophet that didn't write a book, but he is mentioned here in verse number 20. There was another man who prophesied in the name of the Lord, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah, from Kiriath Jerim. He prophesied against this city and against this uh, land in wor uh, words like those of Jeremiah. Sounded very similar words to Jeremiah. And when King Jehoiakim, with all his warriors and all the officials, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard of it, he was afraid and fled to Egypt and escaped to Egypt. And what happened here, as we read on, they sent to Egypt, brought him back, and killed him. And Jeremiah, you know, I'm sure that he felt like that he was going to die because of um, uh, the attitude or the atmosphere that he was prophesying in. Uh, it kind of reminded me of over in Acts chapter number 12 where um, the scripture talks about James, uh, the brother of John, was killed with a sword. They put Peter in prison. But in that case also, James died, Peter, these are both disciples, James died, Peter was spared. Uh, I don't understand why God chose to do it that way, but for some reason and for some purpose, he spared one and allowed the other to be taken in the same way here in this case. Uh, uh, Jeremiah was spared, but Uriah was killed. I want to jump over to chapter number seven and read some verses over here in chapter number seven. And uh, again, there is a lot of um, prophecies towards the priests and the prophets uh, that Jeremiah uh, uh, prophesies against. Verses 1 and 2 in chapter, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, stand in the gate of the Lord's house, there again, and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. He's dealing with the religious people. He's dealing with those who um, are churchgoers, so to speak. And so we see in verse number three, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your deeds and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these deceptive words, this 
the, uh, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the de deceptive words. In other words, they felt like that because they uh, honored the temple of the Lord or went to the church, if we could put it in our terminology, we went to church, uh, you know, we're okay. But he said, you can't trust in, in just your acts of going to church or honoring this temple. That That's not, uh, that's not going to make it or... Or, 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 or please uh, God. That's not what he's wanting. He's want a relationship with him. We go to chapter number eight, or, excuse me, chapter seven, verse number eight. Behold, you trust in uh, uh, words to no avail, deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offering to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered, only to go on doing all these abominations? Uh, there again, you know, they, they felt like just simply being part of the temple or going to church. Uh, they could do what they wanted to do and how they felt uh, and still uh, please God, but it doesn't work that way. You can't, you can't have the security just by going to church, my friends. There's got to be a personal relationship with God and, and, and an obedience to his laws and his, his words. Um, uh, verse number 11, has this house, which is called by name, my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself uh, have seen it, declares the Lord. The Lord knows what's going on. The Lord knows uh, the attitude of the heart and, and the deceptiveness of people. Uh, on the outward, sometimes people look like, uh, you know, they're, they're attending church or, or they're um, have an outward show of righteousness. We see it very clearly in the New Testament with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They had an outward appearance, but inwardly they were unclean. Well, we see it the same here. Uh, chapter 7, verse 25 and 26, uh, it, it says this, uh, from that day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt to this day, I have persistently sent all my servants, the prophets, to them day after day. Yet they did not listen to me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. And so we see that time and time again, and I think it's the same way with us today, in our culture today, in our nation today, time and again, God has pleaded with us to come back, come back and live according to his law laws. And, and um, we go on to verse number 27, and I think this is a major issue. So you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. What? You know, that's a discouraging word for a preacher. You know, a preacher's uh, uh, in church, and, you know, he's ready to preach the word that God has laid on his heart. And the Lord speaks to you. He said, now, I'm, I want you to preach this word. This is the word I want you to give. But I want you to tell you they're not going to listen to you. <laughs> well, that's pretty discouraging, I would think, at least to the preacher. But what a tragedy. The people would not listen. Let me just uh, run over to chapter number 8, verse number 11 to 12. Now, this scripture, 8, 11, and 12, is identical to Jeremiah 6, 14, and 15. A lot of times when things are mentioned twice, you know, you need to take note. And here we see uh, two different times uh, Jeremiah prophesies um, this particular scripture. They have healed the wound, again, speaking of the priests, their, their proclamations. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not uh, know how to blush. Therefore, they fa shall fall among the fallen. When I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. I referred to this scripture back earlier in one of our earlier devotions, but here's an identical prophecy uh, two chapters uh, later that we read. And then verse number 18 of chapter 8, and we see the heart of, of Jeremiah. Now remember, he is called the weeping prophet. We're going to later on uh, read the book of Lamentations where it, uh, it is written by Jeremiah and how he lamented for his people. We'll talk about that later, but look at verse number 18. My joy is gone. Uh, grief is upon me. My heart is sick within me. And friends, uh, as as ministers of the gospel, and you are included in that, you're not. Uh, it's not just preachers or pastors. It's every born again believer. 
This is the way we should feel towards our nation and what has taken place. Our joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick within me. And we, we also need to have that compassion and that, um, that uh, concern to intercede for our nation just as Jeremiah did. I want to close with verse number 7 of chapter 8 and also a couple of verses in chapter 9. But it says this, Even the stork in the heavens know her times, and the turtle dove, swallow, and crane keep the timing or the time of their coming. But my people know not the rules of the Lord. Basically what this is saying, that many of the birds or the birds uh, and the creatures, the created beings, they know uh, by nature the certain times. For example, the certain birds will fly south and migrate at certain times. We don't understand how that happens, but somehow or another, God has put within them uh, a knowing of when it's time to move south or when it's time to move north. And yet God's people who are much more intelligent, we don't know the laws of the Lord. And, and, and in this particular case, of course, it's the, the case of Judah, but there's a, a lot of this in our culture today. My people do not know the rules of the Lord. Let me uh, read over uh, one more, uh, two more verses in chapter number 9, verses 23 and 24. Uh, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts... Boast in this, that he understands, and I want you to notice that word understands. Remember that previous verse said they don't know, they don't understand the law of the Lord, they don't know it. But that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. May we be men and women of understanding that we understand what he desires and what he wants from us. Father, I pray for our people today. God, give us a compassion for the loss, a compassion for those that are hurting and in pain today. But God, I pray that you'll help us and give us a new enlightenment, and a new understanding of your word. And we just thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day. And we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.